Hello, my name is Debbie, Allen Gator Stitcher. Welcome to floss tube number 54. This is a video mainly about cross stitch sometimes, but I'm reading and watching as well. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate all of the comments that you give me and all the likes and all of that. It's really great to interact with all of you. And if you're a new viewer here, welcome. I hope that you like what you see. It's been about two and a half weeks since my last video and it's been relatively quiet. So I've had a chance to do quite a bit of stitching. Um, and for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, I currently have, well, beginning of this month, I had 66 projects on the go. I'm now down to 65 because I have a finish that I'll show you in a couple minutes. Um, but basically I have all these different projects and I use a lot of the games on Facebook to help me sort of decide what I'm stitching. So one of the challenges this, this month is try to get as many finishes as you can. I am... Not sure how many I'm going to get, but I decided I needed to start the month off with the finish. So with all of that, I am going to jump in and show you my finish. So it's a small one. It's one that I started at the very end of 2022. I did a bunch of starts in December, which I really hate doing. And yet I've done it now for three years. So I don't know why I keep doing that. But um, I did a bunch of starts and then I didn't pick it up again. So uh, this is my finish. This is American Goldfinch um, by Lindy Stitches. It's part of her Bird Crush Club. This was somewhere in the middle of the year. I don't know why this is the one I picked. I just decided I wanted to stitch one and this is the one I chose. So you can see, I, I this is, they're relatively small patterns, um, but it's one of those that I had only done like most of this leaf, like I really hadn't done most of it. To, so to say it was a start, wasn't very much. Um, and I needed probably a couple thousand stitches to, to get it finished, maybe a little bit less than that. So it did, you know, it's one of those, oh, it won't take me long at all. And then all of a sudden I'm like stitching and stitching. I'm like, this is taking me longer than I thought. Um, but nonetheless, it's a finish. I think it's really, really cute. And, you know, these flowers here look a little bit weird, but if you look at the way that she has finished it in there, um, I think definitely putting it in some sort of round finishing is the way to go. I would like to do all of the Bird Crush Club. Um, so as I say, one down, 12 to, or 11 to go. Uh, and I still need to purchase one of the patterns. Um, but this is, I, I like the way the round finish. I don't know if I would do uh, these frames that she has. Um, I may just do a hoop finish when I get around to it. Um, but I think it is really, really pretty. Um, and I, uh, I think in the hoop, then the way these flowers are, if they go right up to the edge of the hoop, um, would be really, really nice. Um, so I love Lindy Stitches patterns and I love her Bird Crush Club um, and I just have to, admi you know, I pulled this out, just admire the photography. Um, so, you know, she, she partnered up with a wildlife photographer um, for these birds and, you know, often we always complain about, oh, you know, the cover photo isn't very good. Um, this is the cover photo. The artwork is actually on the back. This is what you see on the front and it is stunning and it really, you know, that's not exactly what I stitched. I mean, obviously this is what I stitched. Um, but it is gorgeous and it's one of those patterns that um, she put so much uh, time and attention to thinking about what it's going to look like and not just a pattern but pairing up with the photographer the, the club went really well so that is my finish so I'm now down to 65 projects and um, so that was my only finish so far I think I will have two more and I will uh, talk about that in a little bit um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the other projects that I worked on so one I showed in my last video as well, I done some stitches on it, but I continued on it. So this is Horn of Plenty by Glendon Place. And I am doing this on 32 count even weave, or sorry, 28 count even weave from Graceness Fabrics, the colorway, uh, colorway Andrew. I'm gonna keep getting this messed up. And I um, am using the Sullivan's on this so basically sorry here is where I am now so you can really see that horn coming in and I really focused on the horn because to me that is you know I'm, not a, I'm a color person which is why this pattern appeals to me so much um, and so I sort of wanted to get the horn done and it you know it's the pattern is printed big it's really easy to read so it looks really huge and daunting but it's not nearly as big as I thought it would be so this is already sort of the part of the horn that curls up. So this is the underside. So it does obviously come all the way up here. And I don't want to say it, but it, and it comes down a little bit more here, but not a huge amount more. Love the way this is coming out and it's, it's been fun to stitch. Um, the Sullivan's, I'd never used them before. And they're nice to use uh, as well. 
uh, I would say comparable to DMC. I just chose to do it so I could get sort of the written richness of the shades um, because it was charted with Sullivan's. I wanted to make sure I had the contrast um, with some of the purples and the greens uh, in this pattern. If it had been charted in DMC, I think it would have been fine too, but when sometimes you do a conversion, the conversion isn't perfect. So that is Horn of Plenty. Next piece I pulled out, it had a birthday in May and I wanted to make sure it got its birthday stitches. Um, so this is the first time this year I pulled it out. This is the tea table from uh, Ser Serendipity Designs. Uh, so it's an older pattern. I believe it's from the 90s. You can tell by the colors that it's certainly uh, a vintage pattern. And this is one uh, I'm doing it on 18 count Ada. So white Ada that I had in my stash when I started it. This was a mania start in 2020, the only year I did mania, and I'm about to show you the back side. So let me get this up to the front side. So here is where it is. Um, so I had done over the previous years, the flowers here. At some point I had gone down and started the top of the teapot and I've decided I'm gonna do the whole teapot. There may be a counting error. The pattern is, not, you know, unlike the Glendon place, which is very easy to read, this one is not easy to read, both in terms of the symbols they use, the size, the fact that it's one massive piece of paper. Um, but anyhow, what I did this time was I basically, uh, I think almost everything I did was a blend of 211 and white. So just back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and then maybe a little bit in here to get some of the scalloping on the top of the teapot. Um, I put my Q-snap too low, so I, uh, this is the lid of the teapot and then the little, I don't know what you call the thing, the thing that you actually hold when you pick up the handle of the teapot, although it's not the handle, um, the handle of the lid. If anyone knows what that thing is called on a teapot, please let me know. Um, but the, you pick up the lid and I had the Q-snap too high up to get that. So next time I pick this up and do the Q-snap, I'm going to make sure it goes up high enough so I can get that and then finish off. Uh, the lid because the colors are sort of the same and then I'll keep working my way down. Um, so it is quite a big teapot, but it, once I pick it up and I, uh, it goes relatively fast and I had put this one away for a while because the pattern was so hard to read, but I've gotten myself to a place where it's easier to read and that teapot is also over the fold, which also makes it a little bit hard to count and I'm sure I made a mistake at some point. Whatever mistake was there, I've now fixed and it's now, I know everything is correct. And so it's just a question of moving on and, uh, and, and working forward. So uh, I'm uh, happy with that. Don't, not sure when it's going to come back out again, but a lot of my prompts and my games call for, you know, something with a, you know, a hot beverage or a beverage. And I do a couple of things that have cups of tea because I'm a tea drinker, but uh, that, that one is just sort of in your face all the time. Other ones are like little teapot, little teacups. All right, so the next one I worked on um, is, this is from Stitching Jewels Designs. This is Three Dancers, and she kindly gifted patterns to um, to floss tubers who had under 1,000 subscribers if we wanted to do one of her patterns and just show it as we were working on it. Um, so that is what I have done. Um, and so this is just done on 18 count Ada, white. Uh, and here's where I am. So I did a lot of, I think everything I did since the last time I showed this was all 741. So basically um, I have worked above like the Q-snap, it comes a little bit up here. And so basically I just, all of this 741 uh, down here is what I did. And that's probably about 600 stitches. So quite a bit, that is one of the predominant colors on this side. I think I have about 2000 stitches left of that color. So there's still maybe less now, um, but there's still a lot to go, but really enjoying working on this. Um, and I love the way I, they just, you know, I didn't plan it, but the key snap that you can see the three dancers as I'm stitching. So that really helps sort of really see this picture come to life. Um, so the bottom, maybe here somewhere, I haven't, I haven't come down far enough to hit there, um, but it's, um, I'm getting to that point. The bottom is definitely within this cue snap frame. So I will keep working on it. And I hope at some point this month, I will actually get to the bottom so I can see that bottom corner and then just start heading in that direction. So that is Three Dancers from Stitching Jewels Designs. Next piece I have to show is one I have not worked on much, although it's one of these pieces that I, I really love it and it just, for whatever reason, doesn't come up that much. Um, and that is Magic Study from Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by 
Rose Con. This is the rainbow version. And when the purple one came out, or the, right, the original one, I should say, which is like deep purples and blues, I loved that pattern, um, but it was a limited edition. I didn't get it at the time and regretted it. So I was really excited when she came out with this rainbow version. So it's basically the same image and just the colors are a little bit different. So here is where I am now. So basically I um, pulled in, I had a challenge where I needed to do some blue. So I did a couple hundred stitches in blue over here. And then I just was pulling in this um, sort of line here. It's not lights, but it just sort of helps, you know, it sort of breaks up the, the thing here. And so this is not, this is not a max color. It's on, it's under 90 colors, but still there's a lot of confetti stitching in that part. So it was just pulling it in and pulling it down. Um, so basically going after some of these ninja stitches um, that have just been sitting around for a long time because maybe I need one strand of thread and then, you know, do it in here and then sort of come down here and uh, finish off the thread. Um, before I have to re-thread my needle again. So this is a lot of fun to work on. This is right now a little over 2%. Um, this is a relatively large, well, it is a very large project. It is about 450,000 stitches, or I think 444,000 in fact. So it's, it's a lot of stitches. It's a project that will take me a very long time to work on, but when I pick it up, I do enjoy working on it. The next one I have to show is a... Uh, one that a lot of people uh, here like, um, and that is Old World Map from Artisy or Charted by Artisy. And this is my oldest project. I started it in late 2019, and it was basically, I would say, the second project. I, I have one other project, like when I when I decided to stop being a monogamous stitcher, I had been working on two, so I was a bigamist, I guess. Although they knew about each other. Um, but anyhow, uh, they I decided that I didn't want to be a monogamous stitcher anymore, that I had for so long, for 30 years, worked on one project, finished it, and moved into another. And I decided I didn't want to work that way anymore. So I started a small, which I have long since finished. And then I started this one on Christmas Day, 2019. And here is where it is now. Of course, it would be helpful if I had it the right side up. Oops, and sorry about that light. Um, this is also done on an 18 count Ada. It didn't even dawn on me when I first, uh, I stitched for so long on Ada, these full coverages, that it didn't dawn on me that you could actually use a smaller count than 18. It was either 14 or 18, that was always what I had. So 18 felt small to me. Of course, now that uh, Magic Study, for example, is done on 25 count, um, so a one over one. So this is two over one on 18 count. Anyhow, basically I continued to work on uh, the North Pole here. This is um, a lot of pale colors, so probably not a huge difference um, between what I showed you last time and what I showed you this time. I'm not, the, and obviously the way this pattern is set up, the scent, the, the pole itself is basically this, the, the center, the up down uh, axis of the pattern. Uh, not the center of the whole pattern, but somewhere in here is the center. Um, I'm not quite, I still have some ninja stitches over here that, um, so I can't say I've hit that halfway point, but I'm very, very close. And so uh, this is a fun one to stitch on, but because of the way that I'm working on it, I'm really trying to focus on getting this area done. And I'm at that point where uh, there are a lot of Ninja stitches, all of the sort of white of the ocean is done. Obviously, I still need, this is uh, North America. I still need to do, uh, obviously, a lot of stitches there. It's not filled in. Um, but there are stitches that are not prominent in the pattern. So when I pick up, you know, there might be 20 or 30 stitches in all of this area with that color. And then I have to move on to the next. So it can be a little bit slow going. But love the way it's coming out. I think it looks great. Um, and because this is my oldest project, I do like to ensure that every month I work on it, um, try and get anywhere between 500 and 1,000 stitches. So this got about 400 stitches since the last time you saw it, so it will come out later this month for some more love. And the last project I have to show you, um, and boy, I have just been flying through my projects. I don't know what that's about, um, but my last project I have to show you is one that I show almost every video, and that is Cats in the Toy Box artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And here is where I am now. 
So a few thousand stitches since I showed this last. My I am determined to get this done this year. I'm at um, about 86% now. Um, so making a lot of great progress. Um, so since I showed this last, I put in a lot of orange on, uh, you can tell the back of this horse and then also uh, the, the wooden piece down here. Now I don't know what this horse is called. I've, you know, I was calling it a rocking horse, but it's not a rocking horse because it's on wheels. It's not a hoppy horse because I actually looked up what a hoppy horse was and it's that thing with a horse head on a stick, which is kind of disturbing, but I had one as a kid too. Um, so I don't know what the, you know, I, you know, it's a horse on wheels that, you know, you can drag around and I don't know if kids sit on them or you put your dolls on them. I don't think I had one of these as a kid, but it's not unknown. But anyhow, I worked on this um, and probably put in a little black as well. I have a challenge this month to put in 2,000 stitches of orange and black on a piece. So this one, just perfect, because I, you know, there's so much orange and black in this section. Uh, so I've been able to do that. I'm about uh, 400 stitches away from finishing that challenge. Uh, and then I'll just be happy to pull out other colors, um, sort of in this, the tail. I, I may have done some in the tail towards the end of last month that I didn't, uh, didn't show you, um, because I filmed before then. Um, but working on that, I will say, something about the way this, these, this image has come up that I don't understand. Um, but Facebook keeps flagging this as this image might violate their, uh, their community standards. I don't see it myself. I mean, yes, the teddy bear doesn't have any clothes on, but most teddy bears don't wear clothes. Um, but you know, I don't know if there's something about this round thing here that makes, I, I don't know. If you think you can see something obscene in this picture, let me know. I mean, I get it. They're just using algorithms on, on the photos, um, but it's almost like Facebook, you know, is pretending like it's doing something great um, by having these community standards without actually, you know, so they let some really horrific things go through and yet, you know, cross stitch pictures, apparently like the algorithm somehow thinks that these are obscene. I think this is, you know, kittens and toys. Doesn't get any more sweet and innocent than that. Uh, and these are sweet, you know, with the exception of the clown hanging out in the basket, which I get freaks out some people. Everything else here is really sweet and innocent. Okay, so anyhow, I just, I love this one, so I keep holding it up. So that is Cats in the Toy Box. And that is really all of the uh, ongoing stitching that I have. Um, I've, uh, I've been stitching a lot, but I think I was stitching consistently on things. And, you know, I, because I don't normally grab a piece and work on it to, to finish, I think that's uh, the American Goldfinch one just working on that so much, you know, meant I didn't pick up a lot of other pieces. Uh, even though it wasn't a huge piece, um, I just sort of put my mind to it and did it. I I made a list of all the pieces that are potentially, I shouldn't say getting close to finished, but could be finished this month. Obviously, I can't finish them all, and I've made a decision to focus on, on two of them. Um, so the first one, I'm going to sort of move into plans a little bit. Um, so the first one, I uh, this is my first year doing it, but I made a decision to participate in Colorado Cross Stitchers Summer Camp. So for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a virtual summer camp. Um, and basically it's just, she puts a challenge out and you start and try and start and finish a project within the month. And you it's on Instagram. I encourage you to go look up her video if you want more information. Uh, and the challenge this month is to stitch on something with a bird. So... This is the one I'm going to do. You can see the two little birds up there. And this is a, a freebie from the Stitching Book Club. She has now started to put out a letter, a newsletter every month. Uh, so this is from the main newsletter. This was her, in fact, her inaugural newsletter. And for those of you who watched me for a while, uh, you know, I just, I love the Stitching Book Club. I love her designs. Um, and she doesn't make videos anymore as far as, far as I'm aware. But when she did make her videos, she's just a really a breath of fresh air. Uh, so really excited to have a chance to, to do this freebie. It's relatively small. Um, so it's something I think I can start and finish in the month. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to do it on a small, uh, I've got like a small uh, scrap of like oatmeal, oatmeal colored Ada that I'm going to do it on. Um, so, and then the other one, which I didn't pull out is Gone Batty from uh, With Thy Needle and Thread from Brenda Gervais. And that one, it's one of those I'm afraid that I feel like I'm closing in on a finish. And the reality is, yes, I'm well over halfway done, but it's not a small project. And I know I have one of those bats left to do. 
So it's going to probably take a lot longer. And so it may or may not get finished this month. It's sort of my third one. Plenty of other smalls that I could work on as well. But the reality is I like my big stuff and I don't want to exclude them. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to sacrifice all my time on my big ones just so I can meet a challenge uh, with the small ones, if that makes sense. The other piece that I'm going to start, um, this is for, um, so Laura Stitching by the Shore and Beth, the Steadfast Stitcher, are doing a sal, um, and it's, this is the piece. This is a Summer Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, so this is an absolutely uh, gorgeous piece, and I think it came out at market this year, and I think a lot of people fell in love with it. I've seen a number of people either working on it or planning to start it at some point. I, uh, and so I'm jumping on with Beth and Laura. And um, I put, uh, Laura has started a Facebook group and I posted in there some fabric options. And this is like, this piece was the unanimous piece. And so this is a 32 count even weave. I don't actually know who the dyer is, but I think what was bothering about it, because this is Summer Quaker and it's called winter winds and I think that's why my mind just couldn't accept even though I sort of knew when I posted it that this was the right one I think the name was really throwing me off but it's a beautiful sort of modeled uh, so blue fabric with some but like sort of grayish modeling coming in uh, so and it's not sorry it's not quite as blue as it's coming up there um, but uh, anyhow, so we are starting that on June 21st, and so I'm really looking forward to, to doing that. Um, I have one other, another project that has a birthday also uh, coming up in a week or so, and so I will obviously pull that out for birthday. That's a full coverage. Um, so that is really all of the stitching and plans I have to show you. Um, I do have some haul, um, but if you are not here for the haul, and uh, then just thank you for watching. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got. I don't think it's a huge amount, um, but you may disagree. Uh, so the first piece that I got, this is a freebie from Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, so this is called Gryffindor Mouse. Mouse. Artwork is um, Natasha Chora. I'm not entirely sure if I'm saying that right. Um, so this is a new background piece. I didn't realize that for Heaven and Earth Designs that the freebies that, that she puts up on the Facebook group are there for like 24 hours. So if someone says, hey, there's a freebie, Go get it quick. When she posts them in, in on her website, they tend to stay around a lot longer. But the ones that she puts on her website, they're like 24 hours. Or, or sorry, on the Facebook, they're there for about 24 hours and they're gone. So if you hear about it or you see it, you think, oh, I will download that later. Later may be too late. So and then so the other patterns that I got. So uh, McKenna from 1884 Stitchery. Um, uh, I, for those of you who are not familiar with her, um, with her online shop, she basically, I mean, she does have, she does a variety of things. She does purchase some things new. Um, she also has taken, um, she, she does a few designs, but not too many of her own original designs or her own reproductions. And then she also, um, will buy stitchers stash. Um, so that's a big thing that she does, and that's a lot of what I have to show you here. And then she also has reached out to some designers who either have done who have done reproduction samplers or or you know older charts, and said, "Hey, uh, can I reproduce these electronically for you?" Um, and so basically, she's she and literally goes in. So she's not it's not a reproduction sampler. She is literally copying what they have done with their permission. And they get a proceed, you know, I don't know all of her business arrangements, but she does get a proceed of the, like the original designers, if they're still living, either she's bought them outright or she, every time she sells something, they're getting a proceed like they were the, as if they were the original artist. So it's really great um, that she's able to bring back some of these designs and people who are buying things on the secondary market now can buy them, quite frankly, in my opinion, a better copy because the symbols are easier to read. Uh, anyhow, but that's my opinion. Let me get, show you what I got from her. So, um, and the, and basically she had sent out in her newsletter, something that she said, Hey, um, I, I knew she was going cause she had said in her, in one of her videos that she was, um, go, a store had gone out of business a couple of years ago when she was, uh, been in touch with the owner and she was buying a lot of the extra stock. Um, and so when she posted that she had, she had listed those items, it was like, don't pass go, don't collect $200 go to her website. Um, so a couple items that I purchased from 
from that. And they were all very reasonably priced. Some of these are still in print. Um, so it's not like they're hard to find. Um, but you know, I enjoy supporting smaller businesses. I'm sure if I went to one, two, three stitch, nothing wrong with them, but you can get all this, but I like to, you know, especially given what McKenna is doing for some of the older, older designs. I like that she's, you know, finding a way to have a profitable business. So anyhow, this is spring squirrel from the blue flower. You know, my love of the blue flower. Um, the next one I got two lavender and laces. So this one is Lady Claire. The next one is, uh, and I'm going to put my glasses on to read the title of this one, Fallen Roses. And I just, I love this one. There's something about the colors and the alphabet and then the woman who's sort of just in the middle of all of that. I saw someone showing this recently and she's like, I'm not an alphabet stitcher, but something about this I really like. I can't remember uh, which philosophy were said that, but I do think this is a beautiful pattern as well. The next one uh, is a Mirabilia. I am not sure if this is an out of print Mirabilia um, or it's just an older one. Let me take a quick peek what the year is. It's MD76, so it is an older one, but not all of her older ones are out of print yet. So this is 2004 and it is Ring Around the Rose Tree. So really cute with all of those uh, kids dancing around. And then the last piece I got uh, was one of her reproduction, one of McKenna's reproduction samplers. So this is an 1884 stitchery reproduction. And then this Helene Sorensen, 1896. And you can also, when she does the reproductions, um, you can get those electronically. I chose to since I was getting all this other stuff mailed um, to get the paper pattern, because I tend to, with the exception of most of my full coverages and uh, my long dog, I do I do tend to, even if I get the PDF to print it off, it's just easier for me than trying to use Pattern Keeper. My other big purchase, which I'm not going to show because I don't want to have to move it, is I finally broke down and bought a Lowry stand. I'm still getting used to it. I think, like a lot of people, I probably at some point will buy... Um, the long arm extension. It's fine for what it is now, but I can see myself at some point, not so much the way I am to the Lowry stand, but the way I want to position the Lowry stand and watch TV and do whatever else. I think I might need the long arm to help make that possible. But the way I have my setup now, it's fine. Um, and I got the advice at the Stitching in the Well retreat that I should um, order it directly from Lowry in England. Um, and that's because, because even though you do pay an arm and a leg for shipping, that's built into the price that you're getting from the U S. So you're basically getting a markup. Um, and I just, I went for the standard metallic color. I didn't get a pretty color because that would have added significantly more on. If it had been a few dollars more, I would have said, sure, no problem. But to get, you know, is, was it worth 40 or $50 just to, uh, just to, just to have a color in this room I'm sitting in, which is my craft room, is all the stuff in here is so eclectic, eclectic anyhow. Well, can't speak today. Probably why my video is so short. Um, but anyhow, so I just went with this standard metallic color, and it's fine. Um, it's a skinny little thing. It just tucks away. Um, so I was just looking for something. I do at times get a little tense, you know, from my head and shoulders like this. Um, you know, sort of looking down. So having the Lowry allows me to sit up more and stitch that way rather than sort of having that hunched over um, that I think a lot of us suffer from. Um, so that is it for um, all of my stitching. Okay, sorry about the pause there. I was trying to think about what book I meant to recommend. It sort of escaped my mind. Um, but anyhow, the book I want to recommend to you, this video, is The Sun, the Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Um, it's a bit of a sobering read. It came out, I don't know, probably five, six years ago. It was an Oprah Book Club book, so it got a lot of press then. Um, but I think it's an important read. It's a, about a man who, a black man who was arrested, I believe, in the 1980s in Alabama for, arrested and ultimately convicted for um, triple homicide um, or three separate murders. Um, and he basically maintained his innocence the whole time. And he was put on death row for 30 years and finally was released um, because um, it, long, long part of it, but basically uh, the Supreme Court ruled that the state of Alabama 
failed to provide him with a fair trial and they had to start the whole process all over again. And, uh, and then the state of Alabama, uh, basically when they started to pick up and look at the case again, decided that it wasn't worth their time um, to do it. So, uh, Basically, very sobering look about what happens if you are poor and black uh, and unable to afford a decent attorney in the United States. Um, it's something that uh, I think for, you know, there are people who do some really horrible things in this world and they deserve to be incarcerated for them. Um, but everyone deserves a chance at a fair trial. And unfortunately, uh, too often people see what they want to see and uh, basically... This, the, his defense attorney was, you know, the state of Alabama, um, because the, 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 um, Mr. Hind was a, a, a poor client. So he was, uh, he was getting, he had a public defender. The state of Alabama only pays at the time, paid their, uh, public defenders a thousand dollars, no matter how complicated the case. Um, so it was, you know, often they would try and get their clients to plead out. Uh, Mr. Hinton refused because he said he didn't do it, um, and basically, at the time, he was working a job, um, and he clocked in, and it sounded like they actually locked their workers into the facility. Um, and so whenever he clocked in, and then when the murder occurred, there actually wasn't enough time for him to get into his car. I mean, it was the middle of the night, to get into his car, drive, probably with no traffic in rural Alabama, to where he, the murders would have been committed. Um, and yet... Uh, basically, and, and that they said his mother's gone, committed the crime, although the ballistics, basically the, the first ballistics advisor for the state lied, uh, and every subsequent test since then was not allowed, um, but that didn't, uh, they were not, uh, they, those tests were not admitted. The state of Alabama refused to basically say we made a mistake. Um, so this man spent 30 years uh, in prison, most of it on um, uh, solitary confinement on death row. Um, it's a really sobering story, um, but also one of someone, I mean, he, you know, he had, he was, he had, I don't want to say he was hopeless at certain times, but his situ situation was certainly uh, bleak at many times and it reflected on him. Um, but throughout it all, he maintained his innocence um, and ultimately he was exonerated. Um, but I think it's really important for um, people to understand how difficult it is for people of color um, especially black men, um, who basically, you know, to uh, the prosecute the initial prosecutor who held onto the case for a long time, basically said, "Well, I just looked at him and knew he was guilty." How that attitude um, was pervasive for so many years, um, and that's what a lot of people have to put up with. Um, that it doesn't matter what the evidence says; if they look at you and know you're guilty, then you're assumed guilty. Um, so. That's the book I have to recommend. Not necessarily a pick-me-up book, but I still think it's important to read. And it's very well written. He, there is a, a co-author. Um, it's not just a ghost writer. There is a co-author. Um, but it's really, you really hear his voice coming through. Um, so I highly recommend that book. Um, and then for what I watched, we I believe it's on Apple TV. Um, the Last Thing He Told Me, uh, starring Jennifer Garner. It's based on a book from Laura Dave. I've not read the book. Um, but I did enjoy watching it. I, I really appreciate Jennifer Actor as a, uh, Jennifer Garner as an actress. I think she's really good, and I think she did a good job in the role. It's basically about a woman who, um, you know, she's remarried, or not? So she is married to someone, and it's uh, uh, he has a daughter. Um, um, so it's his second marriage. Um, the mother is the his first wife passed away, um, but basically, and he works in tech, and basically one day. Uh, she gets a message that said that her husband has fled. The company is under that he worked at was under investigation, and he just he flees and he gives her a duffel bag full of money and a note that says protect her, which means protect the teenage uh, her step the teenage her stepdaughter his daughter. Um, so it's just, um, but it's very well acted and it's not. I mean Jennifer Garner is great, but uh, the person who plays her husband as well as her stepdaughter they both do really well as as well the only creepy thing is the stepdaughter is in high school and the person who plays her boyfriend i mean the, the actor who plays the daughter is probably in her 20s early 20s but she looks like a teenager but the person who plays her boyfriend in high school 
it looks, I mean, I think the actor himself is like 30 and he looks about 30. So even though he's supposed to be in high school, it just kind of, it, it gives a creepy vibe, which I don't think they intended to do. And it was filmed in Vancouver. I'm like, there are tons of very talented actors in Vancouver. And you could have found someone who looked a little bit younger. All I'm saying. Um, but other than that, really well, really uh, great, uh, great program. So with that, I think I am going to call it. Um, so I hope that everyone has a good couple of weeks. I hope to be back towards the end of, end of June. And until then, happy stitching.